the first one is a, a real change in the number of people online. Um, from the year 1994 to the year 2005, we had about a billion people come online on the internet. Yeah. But between 2005, or I'm sorry, between 2010 and 2015, we're going to have a third, uh, another billion people join. So we'll be up to three billion people. Right. That really changes uh, the cyber threat landscape and makes security more and more important because we're putting more and more data online. Um, and so for that reason, it's really important to have good risk management, good public-private partnerships, and good technology, mm-hmm. uh, technology that's built with security built into it. Right. And it's really those three things uh, that, that I think lay the foundations for the future of cybersecurity. I think um, the recent uh, uh, draft triad policies that the Indian government released, for example, uh, each one of those policies had cybersecurity in it, uh, uh, looking for uh, how to address cybersecurity metrics, how to address uh, cyber uh, security processes, and even things like supply chain security and public-private partnerships. So I think the Indian government has identified many of the right things that need to be addressed and it'll be important that they address them in a way that is helpful to both India, but also a recognition that India is the key to many countries' supply chain. And so whatever policy India creates is going to have global impact. My read on where the policies were at this point is they're still developing. And I think the important thing is them, their, their uh, commitment to an open dialogue about how best to address those things. Um, f- cybersecurity metrics, for example, or supply chain security are areas where there are not black and white answers today. And we need a, a public-private partnership to kind of work on the solutions for that. And my, my read of the documents was that there's certainly an ability to have a dialogue about that and work together. And I think that's, I think that's really important to getting to the right outcome. they face a different type of risk. Um, uh, I think whenever you have countries who are coming online with lots more broadband and lots more new users, uh, they could be new targets for cyber criminals because they think here here is um, uh, a culture that might be very trusting when they come online or they may not uh, be used to uh, keeping their browser up to date or keeping their, uh, their PC up to date or uh, being cautious about the mobile messages that they get asking for certain things. And so cyber criminals may target that. Um, sometimes language is a challenge, too. Um, a lot of English-speaking countries have been targeted in sort of broad-scale attacks. Uh, but India's profile as uh, growing economically and uh, the large middle class is also, uh, that's an attractive target for criminals. Um, and... Um, the, the amount of youth online is different. The online population in the U.S. and Europe tends to be older, and so they, uh, they get targeted in different ways. So I, I think that the, the cybercrime threat is there. It just varies a little, uh, a little based on how criminals go after the population. From a consumer level, it's, the biggest challenge is probably awareness. Um, the second one is really about uh, creating a, 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 a safer, uh, more trusted online experience. And that's really a challenge between the consumer, the technology provider, and the government uh, to try to uh, make it easier for people to conduct online transactions with trust. Um, and I think the third one is this really uh, rapidly expanding uh, 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 criminal environment that uh, that really changes the threat landscape.